Hi, welcome back to Lee TV for June the 6th, 2018. And today's show is going to be all about the Ontario election, which is tomorrow. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Ontario politics, a little bit of recap in recent years. In 2003, Dalton McGuinty's Liberals took power and they've been reigning ever since. That was the time that Dalton McGuinty promised in a big pledge to the Canadian Taxpayers Federation that he was never going to raise taxes or implement new taxes so long as he was Premier. And six months later, he brought in the health premium. So somehow he got re-elected and the CTF followed him with a very Pinocchio-like looking mascot that they called Fibber all through the election campaign. Nevertheless, Ontario voted for them again. And in 2011, they voted for him a third time. But what was going on at that point that nobody knew about, except for a few people, was that this power plant that they canceled, Ontario taxpayers were going to be on the hook for. They realized that building some power plants in the Greater Toronto area was not popular with everyone there. They could lose a couple of seats, so they canceled the contract. And Ontario people didn't realize that this was going to have them on the hook for the bill. So there was more than a billion dollars paid for a power plant that never got built. And there's also been a number of initiatives that have to do with green funding and green energy that have also made Ontario's hydro bills astronomical. So to lower those hydro bills, the Premier actually did something that uh, only kicks the ball down the road a bit. She took out a loan to uh, allow room for the power bills to be lower right now. So just like Ontario's indebtedness usually does, just kick the ball down the road for some other generation to deal with it. Ontario is the greatest subnational jurisdiction for debt anywhere in the world. So in this election, we've seen the PCs have been on top right from the start of this poll tracking. And they've never relinquished this until lately when well, it was a, a neck and neck with the NDP. Now, it's really interesting. As soon as the Liberals started going down, the NDP push was on and uh, it probably had a little bit of help. Now, the way that the seats are arranged doesn't look like the NDP has much chance of winning and in fact the PCs still seem to be in majority territory. So let's find out what happens. The probability of winning at this point is 90% plus but we've seen a number of polls in recent years where People thought the election was going to go one way and it went a completely different way. This is at a provincial level in Canada. Uh, we can think of the American election as well. Nobody in Ontario should take anything for granted if they care about the future of their province whatsoever. They might even want to be volunteering for a campaign, calling a campaign office and saying, what can I do on election day to help you get the vote out or what have you? Because this is a very crucial election for the province. Now, there might actually be something that's more than coincidental in the fact that as soon as the Liberals started going down, the NDP started going up. And that has to do with foreign groups that do not want the Conservatives to get in. And Brian Lilly talked about this, where Lead Now is getting involved in the Ontario election. Lead Now is the same group that coordinated the vote against Stephen Harper in the 2015 election and they didn't really care who it was going to be so long as it wasn't Stephen Harper. And this has to do with climate change and some other ulterior motives where we're getting money from American foundations coming into Canada, uh, going to Canadian organizations and then from there influencing elections. Now, one of the reasons that the Liberals have been ruling for quite a while is the help of union money. The uh, unions were allowed to probably advertise as much in the previous election as the other three political parties put together were allowed to. So I'm not sure what the, the third party 
advertising rules are for this election, but this is a, a huge factor where some of these other groups can come in and spend more in advertising and basically move the people against them. One of the things that happened in the previous election was that the Conservatives said that they were going to get rid of 100,000 provincial government jobs and every union freaked right out. All right. So one of the big factors in this election has been Ontario Proud, and we're going to talk about them a bit later, but it's a very popular Facebook group. It has a huge number of followers, more than 365,000 of them, and that is a feat. Now, it has been a real gong show for the NDP. They haven't had a chance to be in power since the Ray days of yesteryear, which were not a highlight for Ontario people. But uh, there is uh, just so many things that you cannot media manage yourself out of. This is one of the people who are trying to gain power in a seat. And uh, they actually had this meme. Oh, if you don't like a rule, follow it. Reach on the top and change the rule. Now, there might be truth to that principle, but when you start talking about Hitler and invoking Hitler as someone to get advice from, it can get, it's pretty wary, I would say. So, uh, if that were the only thing, they, that might be a little bit more tolerable, but there was a, another post where uh, it said that the Canadian forces in Afghanistan were slaughtering innocent men, women, and children, and that voting for federal conservatives or liberals would vote would result in our ballots turned into bullets against our Muslim brothers and sisters in Afghanistan and supposed to be Libya. <laughs> oh boy. You don't want bullets down there, do you? Uh, we have this lady, uh, Laura Kaminker, who described herself as a Marxist, said she would not wear the fake poppy because that would glorify war, and said Remembrance Day did the same. Oh boy. I just wear my peace button on my jacket as always and wait for the collective brainwashing to blow over. When our masters give the signal, everyone can take off the fake poppy made with prison labor and create a bit more landfill and another annual ritual of war glorification comes to a close. Nobody apologized for this. Okay. You know, no matter how the public or people get manipulated into wars, or if the pretense for war turns out to not be true later, the veterans are the last people we should be going after. Because, especially in the World War II era, these were some of the most noble people that you can imagine. Oh boy. I mean, I'm looking at this list and it's just absolutely incredible. And you can freeze frame this if you want to find out some more. But let's keep going to the highlights. Uh, oh, Chandra Pasma. Hmm. The clutches of laborism with its limited ideas of work and dehumanizing emphasis on paid labor, she wrote in a now-deleted tweet. We need to reconceptualize work and find ways of detaching income security from paid employment. You know, work is not dehumanizing. Work is an inherent part of our meaning as people, to be able to do something that makes a difference for others and for ourselves. And if you think that's dehumanizing, well, I wonder if you believe in all this climate change stuff that says that People are just a parasite on the earth, and to save the earth, we should get rid of people. That's that's dehumanizing. Oh boy, ah, 
this lady said that she would not be sad if gun nuts were blown up by a drone. I know this is a horrible thing to say, and she says it anyway. Okay. Blown to bleep with a drone. Hmm. Okay. Now... Wow, you just, you just can't keep up with all the things. <laughs> oh, this is incredible. Okay, we got somebody that believes in magnets. That's kind of a benign problem. Um, okay, somebody promoted female oil wrestling. Uh, denied it till somebody who did it said yes, uh, he was there. And... Uh, so anyway, that, that, that picture's kind of uh, a little more than most photoshoppers could, uh, could come up with. But uh, the only thing he really apologized for was for being ambiguous about equal marriage rights. Now, let's remember, even in 2004, two-thirds of the Canadian public in national polls did not believe in gay marriage. So... Uh, now it's become this unacceptable opinion to have to believe in traditional marriage, even though at that time every single faith community came together for the first time to say there's no tradition in any of the major faiths of the world to endorse a same-sex marriage. So anyway, that's the only apology that they could get, and uh, it's just an incredible list. We'll get into that a little bit more later. All right, now, Spencer Fernando, who is uh, an alternative journalist and a Canadian, said that the small businesses are really going to take a hit. And by his math, it's going to be $224 million that is going to be taken uh, out of a small business tax hike. So the NDP is talking about taxing the rich more, which they would raise the corporate taxes. But for the small business tax rate, it would increase as well. So that's something to think about. More taxes does not mean more revenue. When you increase taxes, you destroy business. There's less businesses to tax, less income to tax from those businesses. So that higher percentage doesn't always compensate for everything. Now, another interesting twist. Uh, late-breaking scandal that's come out where uh, apparently Doug Ford is getting sued by Rob Ford's widow over the inheritance and uh, there's an interesting connection with this that the law firm that is suing Doug Ford also employs the former PC leader Patrick Brown's sister Fiona Brown. So does that have anything to do with it? Who knows? It's just an uh, uh, interesting little side story as the election campaign draws to a close. Now, before we get into Ontario Proud, which is interesting, I want to talk about these voting machines. And the voting machines have to be the best way to rig an election that has ever come to any so-called democracy. There's been at least eight books written in the United States about how you can uh, manipulate it through fractional voting. And the, the assurances that the PCs and other parties have been given I think are, are very exaggerated. There is a lot of reason to think that voting machines can be manipulated. A lot of them have been manufactured by George Soros funded or owned companies and they can be hacked. And so the Liberals and NDP say, oh, we have no concerns about any of this. The PCs do apparently. There was a quote here that really surprised me there is no possibility that the counts could not be fully corroborated. I would actually argue the introduction of technology increases our accuracy. Okay, paper ballots are kept in case, but uh, I, I would really want to look at the fine print there. Because if you're voting at a machine, what is the paper ballot? Maybe there's some kind of receipt that the person gets, but are they going to be handing in the receipt? So if you're going to be doing a public... Uh, call out for all of the voting stubs to come in? I doubt it. 
So whoever said that there's no problem with the voting machines obviously wasn't looking, well, anywhere. To say that there's absolutely no reason that there would be a problem with voting is, is just not looking at the facts. Uh, there's been lots of, uh, of established proof that these machines can be hacked, some evidence to believe they had been hacked, and I just it should not be introduced anywhere. It really shouldn't be. Now, back to the lone wolf operative shaping Ontario's political discourse. Yeah, it's Jeff Vollingall. Have I butchered your name, Jeff? I hope not. 32-year-old former political staffer and employee of the short-lived Sun News Network. Ooh, look at this smear. Look at this smear. It says that this man had no interest in objective journalism, says the Globe and Mail. Um, I'll tell you what. Uh, when you get a Facebook group that has 365,000 followers, there's like 1,000 followers for every single day of the year, that is pretty impressive. And 61% uh, of Canadians log into Facebook every day. So nearly half of those under 30 said that that is where they first learn of breaking news. Hmm. So Facebook is trying to suppress uh, less professionally made media content. Hmm. Don't like that alternative news, hey? And, uh... Well, there's two things that my friends have never done. They have never, <laughs> it ever... It wasn't working well enough. ...looked at efficiencies in their oh, entire it's, life. It's all right. They're trying We have hard. seen waste. We now, have seen scandals. We have seen Ontario mismanagement of your hard-earned tax dollars. We're the most indebted region in the entire world. The largest subnational debt, three hundred and sixty-four billion dollars, because you have mismanaged the taxpayers' money. You believe you know in what? one thing. You believe, Kathleen, is tax, 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 no. No. spend, spend, spend. You believe you know in what? one thing. You believe, Kathleen, is tax, tax, tax. No. No. Spend, spend, spend. <laughs> I think that's absolutely true. <laughs> uh, I like how Horowat was just smiling at me. It's like, what happened? cent tax. We'll get to that one later. Mm. June 7th. Only one day away. This is really sad when you see what has happened to some historic Ontario businesses. I mean, this, this has ended long Canadian institutions because it just got so bad, so anti-business in Ontario already. health scandal lots of insiders profited they got contracts for doing next to nothing <laughs> I wonder if there's gonna be a party June the 7th somebody's gonna be partying we're gonna find out the winner all right let's look at some of those memes those memes beautiful memes wonderful memes glorious memes from Ontario Proud. Oh, by the way, 
just to save us some of the predictable drama slash non-drama, Kathleen Wynne has already said, Kathleen Wynne has said that she is going to be out. Uh, she, uh, well, uh, after this next election. So at least she's connected to reality in this sense. She knows she's going to lose. Now, the NDP, however, if, if the Liberals held the balance of power, yes, they'd be willing to keep them uh, with a seat at the table in government, the government that most Ontarians seem poised to reject. Here's another meme. I don't know if this is a creation of Ontario Proud or just another one that they reused that someone else brought together, but if, uh, if you're talking about socialism, it's not far from exactly what this meme is talking about. All right, now, these high gas prices that Justin Trudeau incidentally thinks are a great idea. Uh, the Canadians uh, love high gas prices. He loves high gas prices. No, no, he doesn't. Doug Ford is going to reduce the gas taxes and Horwath seems poised, at least according to one of the candidates, to, uh, to increase them substantially. I, I don't know if this is official platform or not, but obviously there's some people with very loose lips over at the NDP, and when you have lips that loose, are you ready for government? Oh, yeah, well, there's already been higher taxes under Kathleen Wynne, so we already know from Preston how that's going to be. Uh, another thing that Joel Harden did was he defended the person who put on Twitter decrying the outcry, basically, about a hockey team that died. Uh, almost the entire team was killed. Uh, you've got 20 in a hockey roster. There's 15 deaths in the humble bus accident. I'm not trying. I'm trying to not get cynical about what is a totally devastating tragedy, but the maleness, the youthfulness, and the whiteness of the victims are, of course, playing a significant role. I doubt that if it was a basketball team uh, of black women that there would have been any less media coverage on this. I don't think it was playing much of a role at all. But Joel Harden, the NDP candidate, thinks that it did. And uh, it's just that this woman will not be silenced by your ridiculous smears. Nora's sharp mind and willingness to speak frankly in a world of spin speaks for me and many others. Hmm. Well, let's see if they're speaking for voters. Well, we got this one where they're being called the insane clown posse, basically, by Ontario Proud. And he's kind of, uh, this kind of mudslinging doesn't stick unless there's some truth to it. This is one that appeared on their Facebook website, Ontario Proud. Throw the red poppy into bleach and let it sit as the color bleeds out. Wow, thanks. That's respectful. Very respectful to our veterans. Ah, having a job is dehumanizing. Might have already been through this one. This is a really interesting, um, savvy use of a meme. And there's a series of these where you compare people from the PCs who have actual historic business and political experience in the field in which they will probably be having some authority and leadership if they win, if they form government, versus that of the rivals. So Jessica Bell uh, has written a manual on civil disobedience that endorses the destruction of property and spent, spends her time as a professional protester for radical left-wing causes which have led to many of her arrests. Meanwhile, the PC candidate has a Bachelor of Science, an MBA, a Master's in Political Science. That's what you want. 25 years of experience in financial markets and has directed initiatives in support of military families. Okay. Caroline Mulrooney, successful lawyer and Harvard graduate, proven track record in the private sector, runs a charity benefiting homeless and at-risk women versus this lady who hates Remembrance Day and would sign up for a war on Christmas. Wow! 20 years of experience as a radical activist, which doesn't seem to be ending. Christine Elliott, who has owned and managed 
a business and has supported Ontarians with special needs, fought for better health care. And, <laughs> well, we've heard about Joe Harden already. Okay, Rod Phillips, managed major corporations, funded a charitable group, focused on mental health and addiction, and was appointed honorary lieutenant, lieutenant colonel in the Canadian military. Uh, a social work student right now, he said Canadian soldiers are war criminals. That's Tazlin Riaz, has a Hitler meme on Facebook. Wow. Okay, Vic Fidelli, entrepreneur who founded a major ad agency based in Northern Ontario. The company was named one of the top 50 places to work in Canada and donated 150,000 of his own money toward a hospice project versus Ramsey Hart, who has made a career out of being an anti-mining activist, rejoices in blocking development that creates good jobs for Ontarians, and thinks that Ontario's mines should be shut down. Wow. Hmm. Oh yeah, there's an NDP candidate that hurled an insult at Toronto's top cop. Hmm. Oh, lovely. Yes, so the one thing we do know is that Kathleen Wynne will not be the Premier after Thursday. And, uh, but she is saying on her way out the door that vote in as many Liberals as possible to prevent giving a majority PC or NDP government a blank check. <laughs> Would you rack up the kind of debts that this government has tripling the provincial debt? You have to think that they were treating it as a blank check already. Well, there's lots more going on, but hey, it's been half an hour. Thanks for watching. This was Lee TV.